Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Fuse London and PIV Records style deep minimal house. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets. Everything you just heard in the intro is available in the description. And if you're a patron or a patron, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get going. So, this is loop you heard in the intro. First sound we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. This is a pretty standard sort of deep and punchy kind of kick you would hear in this type of house. You know, it's got a lot of like a very 909 style punch to it. Ring here is just big and beefy and powerful and it hits really nicely. For effects on here, you can see I've just got a little bit of drum bus just to kind of fatten the sound up. And you know, give it that extra like oomph. And yeah, that is it for the kick. The next thing we got after that is the bass line which sounds like this. So here are the notes, you can see it's actually very simple, it's just really like three notes I'm pretty sure here. Yeah, like it's literally just B and F sharp and then another B and octave up. It's really simple, you know, we just have this kind of like... Very catchy rhythm happening where it's bouncing around and it's very syncopated, which contrasts nicely with the kick, which is very like... Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, when you write these type of bass lines, the way I like to think of it is kind of like it's bouncing around the kick. For the sound on this one, I made it using Operator. It's a really simple FM sound. We just have two sine waves here. You can see I've got the second one actually an octave down. And yeah, we just get like this. Honestly, it's really just like a sine wave. You can hear that second oscillator brings in a little bit more grit and a little bit more harmonic content. So you can actually hear the bass. I've also got a low pass on here. So here's without that. And then with it, it's really subtle, but just adds a little bit more deepness to the bass, or a bit more depth, I should say. After that, I've got a bit of drum bus to fatten the bass up. This really helps to glue these two oscillators together as well. Here's without it. And then with it, it's just like with the kick, you know, it gives it that extra oomph to really bring it into the track. Then we just have a compressor side chaining this to the kick, and then I have an EQ8, which is cutting at 100 hertz, which is where the kick is typically hitting. So it's kind of just cutting that range so that the kick will stand out more and there will be more room for each individual thing in the mix. And yeah, that is it for the bass. I have the kick and the bass in a group. This is known as a bus. In this case, it will be a low end bus. You use this technique of bussing sounds together when you have similar sounds that you want to fatten and make them sound like kind of one thing. That's when you would use this. So that's what I've done here. I've got the low end here and this is just making the kick and the bass really strong and the overall low end a lot more powerful and full. So what we got here first is this EQ8. It's just cutting a little bit of low mids going into the next thing which is this drum bus here. You can see I've got the drive up a bit and I've got the crunch up a bit as well. This is really gluing the kick and the bass together. Here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear how essential this is for really giving these the, the fullness they need to have and making the mix really sound fat. And the last thing we have on here is an EQ8 which is boosting the high end a little bit for the kick to give that a little bit more like on top of it. As well as cutting the low mid range, kind of similar to that first one where it's just cutting out the mud. And then we have a low end boost as well with this last little point here. And yeah, that is it for the kick and bass bus. The next thing that we have here are these two stabs which sound like this. These are really simple. They're both just playing this chord, which is like this B minor chord. You can see, yeah, just B minor third and then the fifth. And then I've taken that and put it up an octave. And then here's the MIDI on the second one as well. So you can hear they're just playing off of each other. The last one is just B and then the fifth. For the sound on the first one, they're both made in a really similar way. The first one is made using analog. So you can see this is just a square wave and then a saw wave and octave down from that. Going into a low pass filter, the low pass has a bit of an envelope on it. That's how you get that pluck. And then we got the amp envelope set like this. And then after that, I've just got a bit of chorus to kind of spread the sound out, as well as a bit of reverb. These both just give it some space. And it works really well, too, because the chorus kind of puts it in a different place in the mix in terms of the stereo field and just sort of like the dimension of the mix. So it can really help to take sounds like this that you want to not necessarily be in the background, but, you know, the bass is the lead and the drums and percussion are the lead. So you want to have those really up front in your face. And this is just kind of more in the background, you know, adding some vibe. After that, I've got a bit of drum bus just to fatten the sound up a little. You can hear it kind of makes it hit a little bit more. 
And then the last thing on there is just this high pass filter. And that is it for the first stab. And then the second stab, like I said, is made in a very similar way. It's actually like the same effects, but you can see from the patch on this one, what we've got is we've got a saw wave. And then I've actually got another saw wave underneath it in the same octave with seven semi tones up. So it's a fifth up from the root note. And you can hear this creates this kind of cool, like more jazzy. I'm pretty sure it's a minor seven chord. You can hear when I turn it off and then when I turn it on. Kind of reminds me of Disclosure, honestly. But yeah, just kind of like adding a nice voice on top of it. This also helps to make this one sound different from the first one. It's like they're simple, similar. But it's not nearly the same, so it kind of tricks the listener a little. And then I've just got that going into a low pass. A bit of a resonance and an envelope on there. Got the amp envelope set like that. And then like I said, the effects on this one are pretty much just the same as the first one. Just a bit of chorus. A bit of reverb, kind of giving some space. And then just the drum bus to found it up, and then a high pass filter cutting out the loan. And yeah, that is it for the stabs. The next thing that we have here is this main hi hat, which sounds like this. This is just two layers. Is this hi hat that I had? And then the shaker. I like this hi hat because it kind of has a bit of vibe to it. You can hear that little, like, you can kind of hear some character in it, you know? You can cut that off or keep it like that. And then the shaker just adds that, like, on top of it. You can hear both of them equally. Both of them are necessary. It's not just layers for the sake of layers, but it's layers adding something to each other that you wouldn't get just using one or the other on the run. After that, we have a bunch of percussion, so I'll just play this all for you. You can hear, like, I have this shaker, and then all these little, like, percussions down here. And yeah, these are just adding, like, that extra little... Kind of thing. These are all about just kind of like strategically placing them and making sure that none of them are like overlapping or getting too much in the way of anything else. But it's just kind of like clean and you can hear everything individually. And the overall beat is going to feel nice and busy from these. The next thing we've got here is this tambourine, which sounds like this. So this is an important but often overlooked layer. You know, having something like this that's just going. T -t 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 over top of everything, it adds a lot of energy. If I turn it off... You can hear what that's adding. Like, it really, like I said, adds a lot of energy and a lot of hype to the track. So this is just a simple tambourine sample. And it's doing like that... ...type thing. And then the last percussion sound we got here is the clap, which sounds like this. This is really simple. This is the type of clap you would typically use in one of these tracks. You know, it's just it's very cracky and full. Almost like an 808 or a 909 clap. I recommend starting with one of those type of samples. And then just playing on the 2 and 4. So then, I've got all that percussion in a group. Just like with the kick and bass, you know. Putting all the stuff in a group. And busting it together. Makes everything sound a lot more full. And it makes the whole thing come together a lot more. So the first thing we got in there is a bit of drum bus. Just to fatten the sound up a little. Here's without it. I don't know what this. You can hear it glues everything together, it makes it feel even, and makes everything a little bit fatter as well. And then the only other effect we have on there is just an EQ8, cutting out the low end, and boosting the high end a little bit. It's just kind of cleaning out any like low end stuff that we don't want with all these high bright sounds. And then just boosting the high end a little. To make that a bit stronger, and to make it a bit brighter sounding. And yes, yeah, so that is it from the percussion group, and that is also it from this video. That's everything I got to show you guys. So. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much guys and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.